just wanted to say the, that's not on. The, I can talk about it. So. <laughs> um, but I want to say um, it's an honor to God um, and Auntie uh, for calling me and giving me this opportunity. Um, I do take it as an honor and to everybody else that's here. Um, I just came to bring some words of encouragement. Um, understanding that, you know, there's a lot of titles that we hold, um, so I'm just going to be ministering over you today. Um, but the Bible says to give honor to those that do honor. So, you know, we know Uncle Dave, I know it was Uncle Dave, he was in service. So I want to say thank him for that. But also, too, um, just look at the love that he's done, he's shown to each and every one. You know, I looked at his middle name and I was like, ain't nothing little about it. <laughs> you know, day. But if you think about it, like just a little bit of love right. can go a long way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're going through something and somebody gives you a little bit of sprinkle, you know, it can make your day become better. Because we see like a lot of us came and gave testimonies and, and was talking and was saying, like, I'm not going to have that little love of somebody telling me happy birthday. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just grateful that, uh, you know. Raleigh was. I mean, there were so many names. I mean, he was called Pops. He was called Dad. He was called a warrior. He was called Grandfather. I mean, grandchildren, like great granddad, like whatever it was, Junior, whatever the title was, he was a brother. You know what I'm saying? He was an uncle. You know what I'm saying? But whatever the title was, Proverbs 25 and 11, it says, The right word at the right time is like a custom made piece of jewelry. A warning given by an experienced person to someone willing to listen is more valuable than gold rings or jewelry made of the finest gold. The name David means beloved or loved by God. So he must have been loved by God to have this many people. I mean, it's not even, you can't even really grasp if you look at the obituary and all the people that's on there that actually couldn't make it. You know what I'm saying? Like we're to capacity in a sense right now. And just imagine if we were able to have a full thing where everybody was able to be here. You know what I'm saying? We could just see the love that, that he's shown, you know, but I'm not talking about religion, I'm talking about relationship, you know, and that's what everybody had, was that, as I say, Uncle Dave, you know. But little, it says small in size, amount or degree. But how many of us know little goes a long way? You know, Isaiah 6 and 1, it says, the spirit of the Lord of God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim the liberty to captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound see a lot of times it's not actually what really happens in life that gets us it's our perspective on how we see him. you know it's our perspective of okay i can't spend time with him no more you know what I'm saying but can you hold on to those memories you know can you hold on to the days that you know he said something to you or he called you that that nickname that you'll forever know that that was your name you know, whether it was niece, whether it was Chubb, Bussa, whatever, you know. Um, but another title, you know, he was called uh, Black Bruce Lee, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> you know the art of martial arts, you know what I'm saying, and Kung Fu, it takes a certain amount of discipline, you know. And in order to achieve a black belt, um, you have to become an expert. So you can't just, just say, okay, I want a black belt. No, you got to go through some things. You got to go through some adversity. And it seems like a lot of us are going through some adversity right now. You know, you might be experiencing adversity besides this. And it was very hard to make that trip to come up here just to say goodbye. But I'll leave you with this. Don't look at this as saying goodbye because he said later, right? Mm -hmm. But imagine him always in those good memories of how we hold. And those are the things that we hold on to because we know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So this is just a shell. Right. But the way we look at him, <laughs> As like, you know, him being there. And one thing when we pray and we ask God to heal somebody, God can either heal them on earth or in heaven because there's no more pain or suffering. So Job 36 and 15, it says, but by the means of their suffering, he rescues those who suffer or he gets their attention through adversity. So if God is trying to get our attention, he's trying to tell us something. Verse 16, it says, God is leading us away from danger to a place free from distress. He's setting a table with the best food. So imagine we know that he loved football, right? So he was a Jets fan. 
you know, I mean, he went from Cleveland to the Jets, so I was like, eh, ain't too good with somebody else on the day, but we used to talk, you know, because I was thinking I was going to end up making it to the Giants, you know what I'm saying, but we used to have our conversation, and I'd be like, listen, well, you can come sit on the set, I can actually be your ticket, but you're going to have to root for me, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> but it was just like having those conversations, and like just sitting under wisdom, but you know, if you understand football, you know, imagine God being our coach, you know, but every so often, a player can call a timeout. And what if Uncle Dave called a timeout today? Call a timeout for everybody this year. Because, you know, a timeout is supposed to, we're supposed to come together, regroup, and then we go back on to life. Psalms 121 and 1. I look up to the mountains. New King James Version says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where is my help come from. So I came to tell you help is on the way. See, the first sermon that I got to preach was some mountains you got to go through. Now, we know the scripture says that you can pray and this mountain can be removed. But I don't know if y'all been down to Pittsburgh, but there's tunnels. And in order to get through the mountain, the fastest way you have to go in me, you have to go under it. So you have to go through the mountain. And so that's why I said, you know, some mountains you got to go through because there's going to be some nights where there's some tears there's some crying, there's some memories of us remembering Uncle Dave or whatever you call him, husband, daddy, pops, you know, granddad, whatever it was, warrior, whatever it was, some of those things. But if you notice, when you go in between the tunnel, it gets dark. It gets dark. So your focus is narrow. But if you continue to keep on going, at some point, there will be some light at the end of the tunnel. And so that's why I say I believe that Uncle Dave called a timeout. And a lot of people, they say, you can't question God. But do you really think that God would allow your mind to plague you for the rest of your life? Because if Job 36 and 15 said he gets our attention, that means he's trying to tell us something. I remember when I was little, my mom would always call me. She was always trying to tell me something, you know, so we got to pay attention. You know, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, it says, for I did not give you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So a lot of times we don't ask God to give us a sound mind. But did you know that you can get to a point where you have a sound mind, where you can't hear anything else, where you can't hear all of the adversity that you're facing? You know, you might be, you know, staying up late and just thinking like, man, like he's he's gone. But understanding that, like his daughter said, no more drawing blood or cutting on him. No more of that. You know what I'm saying? He don't have to go through that. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you future and hope. You know, so we see that everybody in here is family. We're still going to continue needing prayers because there's going to be some nights where Aunt Uni will still be thinking about him. You know, I call her my love, you know what I'm saying? And I just want to tell Uncle Dave, uh, thank you for loving my love, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I've always loved family. And, you know, God has placed us in family on purpose with a purpose. You know, we're not called to like people. We're called to love people. We might not like what you do. We might not like what you say. But we're called to love people. And I'm pretty sure that Uncle Dave wished that some of them New York Jets would call some more time out so they could really get some better players. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? That's his team, so I'm going to say, all right. But John 16 and 33 says, These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Verse 27, chapter 14, it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. You know, so I bring an invitation to you today, Isaiah 9 and 6. It says, For unto us a child is born, his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We're talking about Jesus. And so if you have that personal relationship with him, he can give you the, the peace that passes all understanding. See, one of the things that I'm thankful that my mom introduced me to she introduced me to God at an early age when I got to understand who Jesus was because there was times when my mom couldn't help me my father couldn't help me I had to go to God myself 
you know, especially when a pastor killed my aunt. Some people was like, why do you still follow God? And I'm like, because as, as a child, I didn't understand. And God said he was a man that made a bad decision, you know, but this is what helps me. Proverbs 20 and 24 says, the Lord directs our steps, so why try to understand everything along the way? You know, but think of it like this. If Uncle Dave called a timeout, because you understand in, in military and in Kung Fu that there's a certain amount of discipline that you got to have. And what if what he was going through, <coughs> it wasn't bothering him. But he saw what it was doing to his family. He saw what it was doing to his family because even in silence, there's something to be said. See, we talk about the good fight, but God said at the end, he says, stand. So he looked at it and said, you know what? I see what my wife is going through because they're cutting on me. But he wasn't saying anything because you can be in a chokehold or you could be fighting somebody in UFC and they could be holding you a certain weight and it looked like, man, that hurt. And Uncle Dave wasn't saying nothing. So he called a timeout and said, Lord, I'm ready. But the last question that he had, he said, God, if I leave, will my family be taken care of? So I challenge each and every one of you to continue to pray for one another. We all in here, we all family. We might not see everybody, everybody. Like she said, I don't get to see him that much. But just check in and say, hey, how you doing? I just want to make sure you're okay. We saw somebody needed our help outside. I went out there and prayed for her. She came, but she couldn't even make it into here. But that was love. You know, she might not have came all the way in here to see him. But I'm pretty sure Uncle Dave would be happy. So I wanted to let y'all know. Because Psalm 37, 30 and 5, it says, For anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. But when will that morning be? See, there's a place in Alaska that they don't even see sunlight for two months. And I've seen people that every day just going through and going through and going through, not knowing that they can actually have the peace that passes all understanding. So I don't want to be for y'all too long. Auntie gave me 20 minutes, and so I could definitely preach 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. But I understand that the average attention span is 15 minutes. So I wanted to be respectful, and um, we gave time because everybody spoke and they, they things today. So again, Auntie, I just want to say thank you. But again, I commission y'all to just seek his face. Matthew 6, 33, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else, and all his righteousness, and everything else shall be added unto you. And I promise you, you'll have that peace that passes all understanding. Because I had that, because when I was 13, I had no idea of the purpose of what my grandma was putting inside me. I had no idea. When she was 75, she said, everybody get out the hospital room but Loki. And I'm like, Grandma, I don't want you to go. And she said, Grandson, I'm tired of living for people. Take care of the family. And I'm like, Grandma, you ain't leave no manual. <laughs> you know how family can be <laughs> you help them nine times out of ten that ten times you don't help them they start saying some choice words you like you know or you help them nine times out of ten then you ask for that ten time and they don't help you you know but maybe that's why the bible told us to lend expecting nothing in return mm -hmm. so you see what i'm saying i tell you all the time i'm never used by people i'm used by god if they decide to do me wrong, that's on them. It says it in the word. It says Luke 6, 38. It says, for God is kind to the unthankful and the ungrateful and the evil. He is kind to them. So did you ever think that maybe God sent y'all? Did, did somebody say, God, show me somebody that's real. And God sent y'all. And y'all helped them. And they mistreated y'all. God already knew what they was going to do. But we hold that in. We hold that for unforgiveness and, and that ungratefulness. When... Think about it. Just because they didn't appreciate you don't mean God didn't appreciate you. And one more thing. I tell people all the time. Just because your best wasn't good enough for them does not mean your best wasn't good enough. It's how they look at it. It's how they look at it. I promise you that. You hold on to that. You'll have some peace. Like I said, you can have that joy. 
You know, yeah. yes, there's going to be some nights where there's some tears, but having those tears and joys, those memories and stuff like that, that's what it's about. And continue to pray. Continue to pray for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And I know people that say, I don't know how to pray. Just pray what's ever on your heart. You know, God said he never the hair, the, the hairs on our head. So just pray for that. So again, I just want to say thank you for giving me the opportunity to bring y'all words of encouragement. Um, I love all of y'all, you know, safe travels back home. And just know that I will continue to pray for our family. I will continue to stand up for each and every one of y'all. I love y'all. God bless you. That concludes the service um, of this. Um, you guys may come in. So, thank you. Thank you.